Thank you very much. Encouraging signs from the canals. Let's see if we can build on that. Um, I'm really glad to be able to share a discussion um, with uh, Lufa Gerl, whom I know already for a long time, also with Tarek Rana. We had some other occasions to uh, speak to each other and to debate. And I will take as a starting point immigration, but then I will end by not repeating what you were saying, but basically affirming that we have to go beyond the um, metaphors of immigration, beyond the metaphors of integration, and to look for a sense of citizenship. But if we ask ourselves the question now of Islam in Europe and Islam and Europe, and the articulation between the two, how events in the world at large influence um, Muslim communities in Europe, influence also the way others outside those communities are perceiving the presence of Muslims in Europe. There is an articulation, there is a relation between the two, and it has definitely also to do with the fact that Islam is a relatively new presence in Europe, and a presence that has been brought about by immigration. Now, if we look at the history of immigration, we see many examples of the way international conflicts interact with um, migrant communities abroad. So let me give you one example of that. Uh, the Germans, German Americans, were heavily influenced in the way they perceived America, but even more so the way they were perceived in America by the First World War. They were squeezed um, almost into assimilation after the First World War. There were many, hundreds of uh, weeklies, German uh, language publications, and after the war they all uh, stopped appearing. Why? Because the German American Association called for neutrality. And when America got into the war, they um, were seen as people who had wrong loyalties. They were, by the way, criticized in Germany because they were not enough loyalty, because of their political way for neutrality. They were not loyal enough to Germany, and they were definitely not seen as loyal enough to America. So uh, the famous President uh, Wilson gave a speech. Um, in the end of 1916, say there's no such thing as an hyphenated American. Either you're German or you're American. There's no such thing as a German American. So that's just one example of how international conflict interacts with the presence of migrant communities. Um, and of course, um, the question of the presence of Islam in Europe is influenced in many ways by um, an environment of international conflict. But I see some surprising developments there. First of all, uh, I see no cleavage when we talk about the war in Iraq or the war in Afghanistan or that debate about uh, the developments in the Middle East. Generally speaking, I see no cleavage between Muslim opinions and non-Muslim opinions. I see a debate about how Europe and America relate. I see a debate about how Western uh, societies uh, influence the course of events in the Middle East, but I see no sign of a cleavage along religious or ethnic lines in this debate. I see a debate where people from all shades of opinion, all with different religious backgrounds, etc., are joining the chorus, either criticizing those wars or being supportive of it, but definitely not along the lines you would have thought uh, that could emerge. And secondly, even more interesting, the cartoon debate and the debate about uh, the film Fitna, which was of course not only a domestic question here, but one day I woke up, put on the radio, and then the Grand Mufti of uh, Syria had issued the last warning to Dutch people. Now, I was raised in a country, the Netherlands, where the idea was always that we were the ones who were warning the others. Now we were the ones being warned. It was a confusion experience. But anyway, the interesting thing is that what happened was that Muslim leaders in the Netherlands appeared on Al Jazeera, on Al Arabiya, saying, leave us alone. We don't need your comment on our situation here. We can deal with it very well. You make a caricature of our situation here as Muslims. We have many freedoms, many possibilities to influence our own lives. We're not victims. We can act on our own behalf. We can build coalitions when we are under pressure. And they were 
showing that there was a growing difference of experience, of opinion between the Muslim communities living here and uh, Muslim populations elsewhere. I know, I'd say, um, I would somehow disagree with the idea um, of Nufer when she says integration is basically the old top-down uh, model. But for, because for me, integration is all about self-reflection and about reciprocity. Self-reflection on all sides, on the side of uh, migrant communities, but also their children, and self-reflection on the part of the society where migrants arrive. And for me, integration is seen as an invitation to self-reflection, which means that every culture has to reject something of itself, like Soros said. No culture can live with the idea the status quo as it is, is exactly how we want to live. No, when you have an ideal, when you have a shared normative horizon, for example, the idea of an open society, where people can live together with many different religions, then you always should criticize your own society the way it is. And also, uh, migrant uh, communities, they have to criticize themselves, have, have to be engaged in this form of self-reflection. So for me, integration is all about reciprocity. You cannot possibly ask migrants to become citizens if the country that is asking those questions doesn't have a living culture of citizenship. So every question that is asked always returns, rebounds to the society at large. So there cannot possibly be any understanding of integration, in my view, that limits itself to a question addressed to immigrants or their families. All the questions are coming back. Let me give one example of that. Freedom of religion. For me, one of the building uh, fundaments of an open society. Now, freedom of religion um, is being challenged. We have politicians now in the Netherlands that want to curtail the freedoms, religious freedoms, political freedoms, of the Muslim populations of Europe, or in the Netherlands more specifically. For example, not only criticizing the Quran, which is of course perfectly understandable and possible in an open society, but going beyond that and saying we have to ban the Quran, which is in my view in utter contradiction with our fundamentals of freedom of religion. 